So Bailey, take us back before real estate. I, I want you to tell us a little bit about what life and career was like before you grew this really successful business. Absolutely. So right before I got into the real estate business, I owned a residential cleaning company um, that I had for about four years. So I got it to go into all kinds of different cool homes and had like a little team with me. And one of the houses that I would clean for was a realtor uh, who's also at Keller Williams. He's like, hey, you should do this real estate thing and, and get your license. And I was very hesitant. I think it took me about a year before I actually was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I was nervous. I was really nervous about the, the career change because the cleaning was going well. Um, so I got my license, joined KW, and I kept the cleaning business for about my, my first year because it takes a while to, you know, get up and going with real estate. So I kept the cleaning business for the first year. And now even some of the homes that I'm helping people buy and sell are those cleaning clients, which is kind of cool. Kind of like comes full circle. That's really cool. So like, did you grow up in like with parents who were entrepreneurs or did you just know from an early age that you wanted to own your own thing? Uh, because that's, that's pretty neat to go from one business that you're self-employed, you know, into real estate. Yep. So like I was, I think a sophomore or junior in high school, my parents opened up a Tim Hortons coffee shop in Scarborough where I worked for, I think nine years, eight or nine years. And so I like grew up working there and then, you know, out of once I got out of high school, I do like the overnight shift. And, you know, I, I don't know, I always helped them. Like I helped them with like some of their marketing stuff and I helped a lot of my other friends do websites. Cause I was always like a computer person, never really like a TV watcher. I would always be like online on the computer. Um, and I think I was, yeah, I was working at Tim Hortons when I was like creating my cleaning logo and, and everything and started doing cleaning on the side. And yeah, I just, I don't know. It just comes natural. Was that, was that the Tim Hortons at the corner of like Haggis Parkway and Route 1? Yeah, it's now the, um, the Holy Donut. Yeah. No, no way. Okay. So I, yeah. I ate way too many Timbits in there. <laughs> Because I went to school <laughs> right up the street. I never knew that. That's crazy. So, yeah, I so thank you. you. We yeah. probably did. And I can thank you for getting fat in high school. So, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> or your parents. <laughs> so, okay. So you're, you're, you're in Tim Hortons. You're doing, doing this job. And I, I can yep. see you like taking coffee orders and creating your cleaning logo. Um, yep. What were some of the things that you know, contributed to you wanting to make the jump from being successful with the cleaning business into real estate? Was there like a specific thing? It was, cleaning was very physical. I mean, I was in great shape. I didn't have to go to the gym. I was like half the size that I am now. And I mean, I, I loved it. However, it was like down and dirty and it's hard. It's really hard work. It's good money. Um, but I was told like the, you know, the financial possibilities from this other realtor of how much money you can make. And I was like, well, I can do that. And, um, it was kind of like financially like motivating for me to, to switch. Definitely. So, so you go into real estate and, um, the first year you're kind of doing both of those things. What did the first, I mean, how, how did you decide how you were going to grow the business? Like what, what did that look like? Yeah. So when I first um, got my license, I joined Keller Williams immediately and I joined a, you know, top producing team at Keller Williams where I, where I stayed for almost a year. Um, and I learned so much. I joined as uh, being able to do buyers and sellers. And I remember it was, uh, they had their own office in South Portland. So I would go into the office, you know, every week and just listen to the other agents on the phone. And I was so scared. I've changed so much. Like when I would get a phone call, like I still joke with some of the agents because we're friends even now today, agents that run the team. Um, like I would get a call and I would run outside to go take the call in my car because I was too scared to like talk in the office in front of people. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, hold on one second, <laughs> like step outside. Um, but I would listen to these agents on the phone and kind of like, you know, eavesdrop on what they would say and stuff. And, um, and I was like, okay, you know, I'm getting a lot of my own leads now. I think I'm able to, you know, support my own, um, incoming leads and go off on my own. And that's when I really, you know, made, made the jump to being a solo agent. Um, yeah. Bailey, I love, you know, I love 
how relatable you are. You know, I, I think about even my first year, which wasn't that long ago. And, and that's that fear and that uncertainty and, and, you know, sounding silly on the phone. Um, and, oh, yeah. and yeah. And so it, it's just, it's validating to kind of hear, oh, wow, you know, you actually experienced that too. I mean, seeing your huge success and your growth from where you were then to where you are now in such a short amount of time. Um, I'm, I'm curious, can you take a, tell us a little bit about, you know, some of those struggles that you encountered five, seven years ago in your personal life that you, you noted a little bit um, earlier? Yeah. Absolutely. So before my cleaning business, before real estate, before all of that, um, it kind of started around the same time that I started working um, at a parent's restaurant. I started, uh, like I was prescribed prescription um, for like anxiety and um, like ADD medications, which are two like totally conflicting medications to be on. Like why would a doctor ever prescribe both of those? Mm-hmm. Um, but I started taking those medications and I formed like an, an addiction mm-hmm. to substances and I was using other recreational drugs that weren't just prescription. And then really right out of high school went, went quite downhill um, pretty fast. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation before where you just kind of like sit there and you think like, I, I know this isn't where I belong. I know like I don't belong hanging out with these people. Like this is not where I'm supposed to be, but you're still there and doing it anyway. Like I just constantly had that feeling and, and for years until like my low twenties. Yeah. Right out of high school to my low twenties, I struggled with the prescription. Then it went to the oxys. Then it went to heroin and I went to multiple different like detoxes, rehabs, the whole thing. Um, and I was definitely like in my, in my lowest of lows, but I will say during that time, I always had two or three jobs. <laughs> I was always a hard worker, <laughs> even, even at my lowest, I was still really keeping it together uh, with work, but it was, it was really, really hard to, to, to be in a situation like that and, and to, to rebuild self-confidence because obviously like when you're that low and not doing well, it's really hard to like you know, like pull your bootstraps up and say, okay, like I'm going to go, you know, start my own company now. You know what I mean? It, 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 it took a lot and it took a lot of different tries to, to get out of a situation that I was in. Um, it was, it was, it was pretty bad and it's been, yeah, like it's been like seven or eight years now since I've even, you know, talked to anybody from that part of my life or, you know, had those struggles. Um, and I do think about it from, from time to time, but I think I was telling you guys before that I try to just like block it out a lot of times and, you know, just like move full steam ahead and like not really think about it, but little things will happen here and there that kind of like, Oh, that's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I struggle with that or, or certain things will remind me. Um, but one of the, like the biggest things that helped me kind of push through that and get out of that was my family. Um, for a long time. Then they gave up on me after a couple, after a while they gave up. They were like, just, just never call us, <laughs> never call us again. But uh, like now my mom works with me. You know what I mean? She, she works with me as, as my assistant. So like where everything is all good, but um, my family helping me. And then like, it was another family that like, a, Oh, you're good. Did I lose you guys? No, keep no. going. Yeah. We're still oh, it says my, it says my iPhone needs to cool down. Oh, well, you can still hear me. So I'll, so I'll keep going while it cools keep down. Um, yeah, it was another family that that took me in. Um, somebody that I was dating at the time took me in. They kept my paychecks. They, you know, took my phone. They, you know, handled all my money and where I was going and who I was talking to. And they were really the turning point that, um, you know, changed my life. This, this family was amazing. Um, and we, we, I've seen them randomly out, out and about here and there too. Um, but we don't really like talk. And I feel like now at saying this, I feel like I should reach out to them again and be like, thank you so much. Um, that's definitely a good reminder. Um, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, first off, thank you so much for being just so authentic and transparent and, um, especially, you know, you sharing that this isn't really a story that you, you tell too much. Um, it, it's something that is so powerful because like, 
you know, in my in my role running brokerages, like I get to talk to literally hundreds of real estate agents every single year, right? And it's not uncommon to, you know, as I'm thinking about bringing someone into our organization, seeing, you know, past things or talking about past struggles. And I know like that there's that feeling sometimes of defeat or where do I go? Or I'm, I was at rock bottom. Can I ever recover from this? You know, Bailey, if there's like, maybe there's an agent right now, like listening to this and, you know, maybe they could be running a successful business. Maybe they're just getting started and they're battling with some of these demons right now. Like if they're thinking like, how do I push through or how do I change? Like what, what would you say to them? The biggest thing for me, and I didn't know this saying then, which I do now, but it comes full circle, is that you are the the five people that you hang out with the most. I think I'm I've kind of screwed up that saying, but um, you know, you are who you surround yourself by. And at that time, I was just couldn't get away from that crowd. And it's really hard to like, okay, this is literally everybody that I know. If I go through my phone, these are the only contacts that I have. It's changing your phone number you know, not going, not talking to anybody when they reach out to you on, online or whatever, just you have to block them. You know what I mean? It's, it's tough to say, but you kind of just have to literally like cut, it out, cut people out of your life because it, it, when, you're, when you're constantly around people or you have their contact, but you're tempted to reach out to them for having a bad day or, you know, it, you know, tempted to do something, you know, not knowing who to call or where to go is, is good. <laughs> Um, and it's having a good support system. So whether that's going to meetings, which I did a little bit, and then I, I found that by going to meetings and talking about it a lot wasn't really good for me. So I kind of stayed on my own. Um, but some people really find the meetings beneficial. Um, and, and I preoccupy myself with work. I really just dove full into work. I was like, I'm going to start this cleaning company. And then, um, then kind of just took off from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Bailey, I was actually thinking about this this morning, so and it aligns so much with what you're saying. You know, I think a big part of the challenge with running a successful real estate business is the self-care piece. And as we know with addiction, right, if we're not taking care of ourselves, that creeps up. You know, and it's it's almost like it's that that skeleton hiding in the closet. So it's it's almost like a signal to us if we're starting to like slip down that path again. It's almost like a reminder of like where am I where am I slipping up in my self care that I need to kind of pour back into. So can you talk to us a little bit about you know if you're starting to get those thoughts again or how do you kind of align yourself again and kind of stay in that path? What are you doing in terms of taking care of your your self care, your mental, spiritual, physical health to kind of keep you moving in the right direction? Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> I might not be the best person to ask this. I literally dive full into like work. I like you know I just I focus on my career and my goals and and what I want to achieve and my family you know spending time with my friends that are all very good people that have similar you know goals and motivations and and dreams in life um that's that's what I find to to be that works for me um as far as like self-care um I mean besides like you know Sometimes it, it sounds kind of crazy. So sometimes I'll just like talk to myself. I'll be like, okay, Bailey, like get it together. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's, you know, we need to, we need to move on from this. Like I'll literally like give myself a little pep talk sometimes if I'm like having a bad day or I don't, I don't get those temptations anymore. You know what I mean? So that that's been a long time since I've thought about anything like that or had a struggle or um, anything like that. But um but, but for me, it's just staying busy. I, I find that when I have a lot of time, like just extra time, I don't really know what to do with myself. So oh. I just, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll literally just sit there and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I need to find something to do. <laughs> so whether well, it's like working on my house or whatever. Yeah. A couple, a couple of things that I'll, I'll say there. It doesn't sound crazy when you say that you talk to yourself. I, I say okay. all the time, right? No one talks to you more than you talk to you. That's not unique to just you, Bailey, or to Melanie, or to me. That's that's hum, That's human nature. Our brain is constantly feeding us information, and so I always say it's important. What are you telling yourself? 
right? Because that directly feeds into the behaviors that we then that we then say. And so, you know, if you're listening to this, I'd encourage you. Um, this is one of the reasons why I say like meditation and journaling, any type of self-care practice like that is really important because it allows you to quiet the voice in your head and hear exactly what you should be telling yourself. And so I think that's really, really powerful, insightful, actually. I think the other thing you said is like, you know, staying busy. I'm in the same boat and I know there's so many agents that are in the same boat, whether it's it doesn't have to necessarily be addiction. It, it could be anything that's just unproductive usually happens when we're bored, right? I mean, like how many of us did our parents tell us, um, you know, if we said we're bored, perfect, I'll find something for you to do. Like, I don't yeah. know, do you guys get that? <laughs> like, I remember Definitely. my parents, my parents knew that an unproductive or an idle mind is kind of a playground of just a lack of productivity, a lack of like good things to put out into the world. And that could be a myriad of things. And so I think there's just like great wisdom in both of those. Um, I, I kind of bring us back into your business. So the first year, um, I mean, you, you dive all into work, you overcome this enormous struggle. Like, I guess the last question that I want to ask, you know, related to this struggle, because it's so powerful is are there any lessons that you learned from that period, that chapter in your life that you can now say in your business, like, wow, I'm better because of the past trials that I had to endure. Is there anything that comes to mind? Definitely. A, a lot of it is like feeling like ashamed and embarrassed. You know what I mean? Because at that, at that time, everyone that knew me, that's what they knew about me. So it's, it's hard to overcome that reputation and get away from that. And things that people say, you know, it, it hurts and you remember it. So for me, a lot of it was just not listening. You know what I mean? Kind of not listening to the talk. And when I was like, Oh, I'm going to start my own cleaning business or oh, I'm going to get my real estate license. People are like, what is she doing? You know what I mean? It not a huge amount of support from not, people that are my friends, but just people in general and just kind of, you know, keeping your head held high, even if you aren't 100% confident yet, you know, sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. You have to just, you know what I mean? Get, get out there and, and, and go for it. Um, and you'll, you know, make mistakes along the way and, and learn lessons, but, um, just, just don't be scared to, to take, whether it's the first step of recovery or your first step in a career, your first step on a listing appointment, you just have to go for it. Cause the only, only person that's really like judging is, is usually yourself. And I find that about me is I'll, I'll, I'm my own worst enemy, um, as far as like judgment goes. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, Bailey, when you say that, it, it, it kind of brings me back a little bit to, I, I guess, you know, and you had mentioned this, the, the crew that you were surrounding yourself with, you know, as you're starting to want a better life for yourself, it's like crabs in a bucket. They're going to pull you back down, you know, but you persevered through that. You know, you saw the bigger picture, you saw what you were capable of and you, you made that, that happen for yourself, you know? So I, I just commend you so much for that. Thank you. Bring us, bring us to kind of the next, you know, phase of your career when you, you left, you know, the team, you started, um, you know, sold with Bailey. Tell us about that. Bring us into that. Yep. So when I was on the, um, the real estate team, when I first joined, I asked the team leader, I said, can I make my own Facebook, my own like business page? He's like, yeah, sure. I'll see why not. So I started my own business page and I had like 300 followers. And I was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Like this is game changer. You know, you know, so excited about it. And then I started doing these little like giveaways and, you know, posting all the time. And I started to recognize that people were like, Oh, I know who you are. Even if I had never met them, they're like, Oh, I see your, your ads online or, um, Oh, I saw that. I see that you're really busy and, and doing really well. And it was all from social media. So I was like, okay, like the social media thing is working. I think I'm going to run with it. And then I went with a business Instagram account. Um, so as I went solo, um, a lot of the leads that I was getting were, were all social media related, um, from Facebook and Instagram. And so I sold in my first year, 12 homes. And then I think like 32, the next as a solo agent, um, which is still a lot of homes for your second year. You know what I mean? Your second year in the business. Um, 
and then the next year, I think like 52 homes or something like that. Like it just kept going up and up from there. Um, and then I had, I hired an admin last year it was the first year that I, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to take somebody on now because before I was doing all my own paperwork and, and marketing and stuff. And I was like, all right, I need some help with this because I can really take it to the next level. So meeting with like Brad in our market center, you know, meeting with Brad, he really, I took one of his classes and, you know, he kind of held my hand along the way. He's like, all right, this is how you can do it, Bailey. And, um, that was a game changer, you know, hiring, hiring an admin, um, to help take, to take the load off. And then, yeah. So with an admin last year, I sold like 63 homes, 62 or 63 homes, which is, That's fin- I thought was pretty amazing. And this year I sold almost that many already this year. So yeah, that's, keeps- that's what I was just going to say. I, I think I saw that you were like already in the fifties for the, for year to date. Yeah. And so this is, this is your what fifth year in the business. All right. Fourth or fifth, maybe fifth. I don't, I don't even know. I got it in 2017 <laughs> when I first started. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, regardless, whatever you can see the progression in the year over year growth. And I'm really curious to jump into social media a little bit because, you know, a big piece of your success has been from perhaps less, I'll call it less invasive um, forms of selling, right? And I don't yeah. say that as a negative to cold calling strategies or anything like that. We have a ton of agents who are successful at that. But for you, you saw and dove all in in social media. So bring us into like what that looked like. I mean, were you were you direct messaging? Were you joining groups? Were you doing both? Were you running paid ads? I mean, t- talk to us about the strategy or if it was a little more organic and you were just yeah. tr- trying different things. What did that look like? Absolutely. So you're so right. My, just my personality type and the way that I am is, is very non-invasive, you know, not pushy at all. And a lot of clients that I meet with say that they love that about me. They're like, wow, you're really just no, you know, no, totally no pressure and just easy going. Um, that's just how I am. So I totally agree with what you say. Like there's a lot of people that are very successful with cold calling and, and stuff like that. It's just, it, I, I tried it and I felt so wrong when I was on the phone. It just felt so wrong and it wasn't for me. So, um, for me, it, it was growing my page organically, growing the amount of like people that like your business page, because if they like it, then they're going to see your posts. Um, so I slowly grew, I think down at like almost 5,000 or something like that. Um, and by doing the, the giveaways and the sponsored ads, um, was a really good way to grow that. And for the sponsored ads, I think I was only spending like a hundred or 200 bucks a month. So it was either an ad to like my page or an ad with a link to my website to, you know, download a buyer or a seller guide or um, a link to something of value to give people. That way it's not just like, hey, like my page. I'm like, like my page because I, you know, do these giveaways. I feature local businesses. I feature local community. Like try to like, you know, give people something and then you're going to, you know, hopefully get something in return. Um, so that was Facebook and Instagram. It's, it's really a lot in the hashtags that you do, like doing the local hashtags and get, you know, getting discovered by new, um, potentially new clients and other realtors from around the country will follow you. Um, I found that I get a lot of referrals um, from other realtors who find me on Instagram looking for an agent in the Portland, Maine area. And they'll say, hey, do you cover this area? I'm like, yeah, I do. They're like, oh, I've been following you, and you'd be perfect for this client. So I get a lot of agent referrals that way. Um, Same with Facebook, but more on Instagram. Yep. Um, Those are only, like, two social media things that I do. I I have a Twitter account. I think I've done – not a Twitter. um, What's the – TikTok. TikTok. I did one TikTok. (laughs) I did one TikTok. I think only like two people looked at it though, and it wasn't very good. But I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep trying on TikTok. <laughs> I always I always feel like a dinosaur when I try TikTok. I'm like, no, I'm only like 31. What the heck? I can't I can't be this old already. <laughs> I know. Me too. You know, Bailey, I I love I love how natural you, you, you make the process seem because you know truly I think that there's a lot of pressure to go out and, and do some of the things that may or may not resonate 
with especially new agents, you know, and that that can be scary. That can actually turn people away from actually wanting to to generate business because they they're not doing it in the model or, you know, but you're what you're saying is, you know, you truly are just being yourself and you're putting yourself out there. You're not making it a high pressure situation and people actually are are relating to that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't reach out um like I don't do any direct messages to Random people, the, the leads that I get are from somebody who, you know, messages me directly and says, hey, can you help me? Or maybe it's their mom or, you know, they, they know someone that needs help um, or they will find me on social media with a link to my website and then sign up on my website for like an appointment or something. So it's people that reach out to me. Um, it's it's crazy because I did I think I did cold calling for a few months, like like three or four days a week. And it, and I think they could, the people on the other end of the phone could tell that it just wasn't me. They're like, this girl's so awkward. Like, just please get off the phone with me. <laughs> like, I never got one like listing from it or anything. Cause it was just, just wasn't who I, you know what I mean? Just didn't feel right. Um, but with, when, with social media, people reach out to you. So they're like, Hey, you know, can you help me? Which, which I think is, you know, totally non-invasive you know, non-invasive. And, um, it's, it's nice because it's not that I don't lead generate at all. You know, I am lead generating, I think when I'm posting or, you know, running an ad or something. Um, but other than that, I'm not, you know, reaching out to people directly. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit too, you just recently brought on a new buyer agent, I think last year or so. Maybe two yes. years. Ago. Yeah. Tell us about that process and, and where, when did you kind of make that jump and, and how, take us through that. Yeah. So it was around this time last year, I was like, all right, I've got a lot of leads going on and I'm can only be in one place, you know? So I brought on a, a good friend of mine who I had met on another team. Um, and she was, we, she was with me until about a couple months ago. Um, I was honestly just, really busy it was hard for me to it's hard for me to um like take on my own deals and stuff and help somebody else too I found that I was just so overwhelmed that I kind of needed to take a step back and really just focus on my own clients and my own transactions and then and then hopefully get a day off here and there (laughs) and uh focus on just my personal life you know yeah. Well, in, in kind of speaking to that, I mean, it, it's such growing a team, especially at the transaction pace that you're picking up, I mean, is a, is a growth process. And often it's three steps forward and two steps back. And the steps back are not necessarily a negative thing. Um, it allows yeah. us when we step forward to r- recognize some of the things that we actually need to focus on and work in our business. And so, you know, when I hear that, I, I hear, okay, you bring on an assistant, which is your first hire. It's awesome. And then you start bringing on the sales support. Um, sometimes we realize, okay, there's some, a few more things administratively and operationally that we need to dial in before we add more sales support. Because here, yeah. here's the thing, and just from a, like, here's a big level consulting for you guys. You know, a lot of people think that your first hire because of an overwhelming amount of leads is sales, and it's not. It's support. But then the most frequent mistake I see is that we then think that the next hire is sales. It's usually or often still not. It's another administrative or it's better system and process. And that, it seems like you actually recognize pretty quickly. And so talk to us about, because you say a lot of your growth is, um, has been around the systems that you've developed. Does that come from your mind? Like, are you, are you system oriented or have you outsourced that your whole, the whole time growing your business? Yeah. So I'm very system oriented. I'm very organized. You should see the way I fold all my towels and all my clothes are organized. It's just who I am as a person. It just drives me crazy when things are out of order. Um, So I use um, Follow Up Boss, the CRM um, that I used on the team when I first got into real estate. They use that and I kind of stuck with that throughout and it made it it makes it so easy for me to, to keep track of everything. Um, and then I keep track of, um, other things in command, um, and use like Canva for designs and stuff. But, um, as far as outsourcing, literally just this week, starting a Sunday last week, I just brought on a crew to take on my social media, um, marketing. 
So up until last Sunday, I was doing it all myself. And this is the first week that they've kind of taken it over. And, you know, as we're learning, you know, they're learning about me and learning about them. Um, and we're kind of, I mean, they're incredible. They're literally like doing everything because I, I found that I was slacking. Like I would end up posting like twice a month because I'm just so busy and, you know, with clients come first and I'm not able to keep up with, with social media or my ideas were just getting stale. You know, I wasn't taking a lot of like creative time to come up with new things, um, new things to do. Cause once you start doing certain things, you start to see all these other pages, they do them too. So you got to stay ahead of it, you know, and come up with some fresh content and fresh ideas so uh, that's what they're working on so so Bailey when when you're talking about you know you're starting to leverage out you know and, and really focusing on your clients tell us you know I'm always I'm fascinated to know kind of what you know these higher performing agents like yourself what does a typical day look like you know what is that top 20 percent of the things that you're focusing on that you really just need to make sure you're getting done every single day Absolutely. So this is probably going to be a really boring day. <laughs> so I wake up and I open my computer in bed with my coffee. <laughs> and then I, um, you know, I usually have like an appointment like at nine or 10. So the morning time for me, um, I like to work out in the morning at home. Um, I don't really like going to the gym too much because there are people there and I can, you know, I can make weird faces and sweat as much as I want when I'm by myself at home and not feel embarrassed. Um, so I'll, I'll work out and then just have like a smoothie for breakfast. And then I get in the car and go to my appointments. Um, I'll have all my stuff prepared the day before that way I can just, you know, get in the car and go and, and all my, you know, documents and everything are ready. Um, and it, whether it's a, a listing appointment or a home inspection or a closing, there's always something going on. Very rarely do I have a day where there isn't anything going on. Um, so I don't, I don't schedule my days off. It's kind of like, oh, I guess today's my day off and I'll just take it, you know, um, which probably is not recommended, <laughs> but that's just what I do. Um, and I, when I get home at night, um, sometimes I'll go out and hang out with my friends or, or, you know, family or something and do something fun. But usually I'll just go home, um, you know, have some dinner, crack open a truly and, you know, go to bed. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it sounds like, I mean, I picked up on a couple things there. And one of the most significant is you prepare for your appointments the day before. And even though yeah. that doesn't sound like rocket science, it really, <laughs> in the life of a business owner, a flourishing business owner oh, yeah. like yourself, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a huge deal. And so like just, I think most top achievers, most top performers, they understand that the, the millions are in the mundane and the mundane is the prep, the the preparation, and you know when we when when I work with agents that are doing volume like you and Melanie both are, um, I am constantly telling them like you've got to have a process whereby the preparation gives you white space to know what you're getting into next, and, and so I hear that, and it it does I mean it makes sense that you're able to be successful because of that. And I mean, who doesn't love a truly at the end of the day? <laughs> uh, absolutely. And like clients can tell if you're not prepared. Like I will tell you, there's been a time where I woke up and I was like, oh no, I forgot to prepare for this. And I get to my appointment and I'm so embarrassed because I don't have my stuff together. So I'm like, all right, I'm never going to let that happen again. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen in the morning too. Maybe something comes up where you don't have time to do your prep. So I'm like, nope. You know, I have a fear of being late or underprepared, so I, I definitely do it the day before. Um, and definitely a truly at night, truly or a white claw. I like them both equally. Um, don't discriminate. <laughs> this this episode is brought to you by Truly. <laughs> truly, you can uh, hit us up later for a sponsorship deal. <laughs> Haley, on, on that note as well, you know, you, you talk about almost, you know, a good, a good learning opportunity, right? You showed up, you weren't prepared and you're like, I'm never going to do that again. Do you have any, you know, what comes to mind when you think back on the last, you know, four or five years, what are some of those bigger lessons in business that you can kind of pull from right now and just share with us? Absolutely. Um, my biggest lessons in business were 
going into appointments and not because I wasn't prepared, but just feeling like I, like I didn't, like I wasn't good enough or that I couldn't sell that high price of a property and feeling intimidated, I guess is the word feeling intimidated by, you know, a client or a home, you know, based on the price and, um, you know, location and stuff, I would be scared and the, the client could tell that I wasn't confident when I went in or feeling like I didn't know the neighborhood well enough or something like that, where I, they could pick up on it and I didn't get the listing. You know what I mean? Um, that would be, that would definitely be a big mistake. Um, another is letting, like letting your follow-up slip through the cracks. Um, like I have like a, in my database, you know, I'll have, I have like a good follow-up system, but sometimes when I get really busy, I'll let that slack sometimes. And then I'll circle back a month later and they've already listed with somebody else. I'm like, man, like they really liked me. They would have used me and they probably just lost my information and I just never followed up with them. So that's something, um, that's something huge. And I've been told by a lot of people that, wow, you're very persistent and you follow up a lot. And we really like that about you, you know? So, um, you know, no one wants to feel forgotten about. So that would be a mistake with another mistake that I've made along the way. Um, oh gosh. Besides the, you know, bringing on teammates too early kind of thing, um, which we already talked about. Another would be, hey, you don't, yeah. you don't have to have another. <laughs> I don't like, I have to have made, made other mistakes. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I appreciate I, I appreciate the the openness there, and we we all skin our knees. Um, uh, I I was gonna I wanted to this is gonna be a question and a commendation, um, because I don't know if you remember this. So so for listeners out there, um, you guys know I was originally from Maine, and I I actually was with KW Maine for um the beginning of my real estate career. Um, I remember sitting with you, Bailey, um, yeah. and just getting to know you. And um, I remember asking you about like your future vision for your business. And it's really interesting because you made reference to a person, an agent in the office, a team yeah. who was a top performer in New England, and it was her and an assistant. And you yeah. said, if yeah. I, I'm gonna have a business like that. And so first I wanna commend you because yeah. It is amazing to see the parallels between your business and what her business has looked like and how you've grown and even just like the way you guys carry yourselves as business owners and communicate. And so, I mean, super proud of everything that you've accomplished there. So the question in that is, how, do you always like set your goals like that? Do you find someone who you want to like be like and model and yeah, then base, yeah. try and copy them? Is that how you set goals or what does that look like? Basically. So, so for me, um, I know the agent that you're talking about and she's still my idol, by the way, nothing has changed there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think just finding a strong, like independent woman who is so successful like that for me is just huge because I'm like, I, I want to be like that. I want to be able to do those things. So it's, it's more of, you're right, the way that she carries herself, the way that she gets dressed every day. She gets dressed professionally. Like I remember I was at an event um, and I've only spoken to her a few times. I was at an event and another agent um, had asked her, how do you get all these high price listings? She's like, oh, I actually get asked that all the time. And if you believe it or not, one of my biggest pieces of advice is the way that you dress every day. She's like, there's a lot of, you know, agents who, you know, will show up to an appointment like without their hair done or without, you know what I mean? Just kind of rolling in hot and, um, you know, not dressing professionally and, and that kind of thing. So I always remembered that. And I, and I was kind of guilty of, you know, sometimes being too casual. So now every day, like when I go to work, even if my client doesn't matter what price range, I always, you know, get myself together and look professional. They, well, and uh, I, I forget who told me this, but it was like in grade school and maybe they told us this because I was in a private school and required to basically wear a uniform. Uh, but they said, you dress professionally, you think professionally. And maybe that was a cop out, but I, I kind of feel like there's some truth in it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think so too. And it gives you that confidence too, where if you get like a random appointment, like right now someone calls me like, Hey, can you come over for a listing appointment? I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? I'm not like, you know, in a sweatshirt and a, and a messy bun, you know what I mean? So, yep. 
Awesome. Well, I'm sure Melanie and I could spend uh, just hours um, asking you more questions because you've grown such a tremendous business in a short period of time. Uh, I mean, you're a top agent in your office, you're a top agent in New England, inside of the biggest real estate company in the world. And so um, kudos. But for the sake of time and being respectful of your time, I want to transition us into the last segment of our show. Three, two, one action It's the same three questions we ask every single guest. Are you ready? Your, I'm ready. Your, your iPhone was overheating, so I mean, your yeah. iPhone's in the hot seat. <laughs> Mel- I feel like Melanie- I'm in the hot seat now. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie, kick us off. Question number one. All right, Bailey. Who is the most influential person on your business and why? I feel like I'm cheating on this one because David just mentioned this, but I would say my, um, the most influential person, and I don't know if she knows it, but now she's about to, <laughs> is Bridget Vermette in, in our office. She's a top individual agent. She sells like multi-million dollar listing homes, like, you know, left and right. You know, she's, she's phenomenal um, and a huge, huge idol of mine. Well, I, I love that. I, I use Bridget as an example all the time without mentioning her by, by name, but she's just like, she's a, a quiet success. And uh-huh. I think quiet successes are some of, some of my favorite. They just, they wake up, they go to work every day, they get it done, they serve people at a high level. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't overstating that I see uh, so much of your development has grown that. And uh, when she does hear this, I know she's going to be, gonna be flattered. <laughs> question, question number two. I I won't tag her. You can you you can do that. Um, question question number two. Is that what is the most influential book on your business? Influential book. Oh man. Um, I would say it would be the the rich dad poor dad book. I know it's not well. It's kind of real estate related, but, but I would say that's that's the book that I remember reading that really kind of sunk in. Um, just because of our you know my family dynamic and everything like that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. No, that's uh, yeah. probably the most popular answer on our show. Yeah. Good one. Oh, I hope my dad doesn't listen to this. Oh God. I won't tell him. I won't tell him. <laughs> okay. Poor guy. Right. Third question. <laughs> this is the most this is the most transparent transparent episode. I love it. <laughs> All right, Bailey. What is the one piece of advice that you can give to agents to go out and take action right now on their business? Biggest piece of advice would be to go through your whole entire database because there's there's always stragglers in there, people that are looking to buy and sell that you just haven't reached out to or it wasn't the right time and you're going to be surprised if you shoot out 100 emails, you're going to get at least one back, you know, somebody who's, who's ready to, to buy or sell that will use you um, from what I found. Love it. I mean, databases, is... It, it, it goes back to this idea, even when you were telling us about your day and your top 20%, that it's the fundamentals of this business that create massive success, right? Like you and I all have our idols and I think every single one of them at the core will tell you that it's the best do the basics better. There's, there's some alliteration for you listeners out there. The best do the basics better. And so it's the lead gen, it's the lead follow-up, it's the going on appointments, negotiating contracts, and practicing. You get those five things into your business plan every single day, and you're going to be successful. Following up, not letting people fall through the cracks. And in order to do any of that, you need a great database that you're feeding consistently. Ba- Bailey, this has been a lot of fun. Um, it- it's so cool when we get to interview um, uh, friends, colleagues, um, and I, I know there's going to be more people who want to connect with you after hearing your story. Um, where's the best place for listeners to connect, reach out, learn more about you? Absolutely. Um, they could definitely message me on my Facebook account um, or my Instagram, Sold with Bailey. Either one works. Both have my phone number. So they can call. I get calls you know, from agents that want to ask questions. And you know, people are welcome to call anytime, um, email. My website, baileypate.com, has all my contact information, and people could definitely reach out anytime. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Listeners, I know you gained tons of value from this. You've taken away a lot. As always, go play.
All In. Hey guys, thanks for listening to this episode of the All In Podcast. We want to invite you to find all of today's resources from our show page at aipodcast.co. We also ask that you take just one minute to leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. This is how we grow and how we're able to bring you the best content each and every week. Now go play All In.